My name is Arno Rosmarin. I'm at the uh, Stockholm Environment Institute. We have a rather interesting uh, selection of speakers. We'll be talking about community-led approaches in, in uh, Africa. Uh, there's a major focus on something called community health clubs. For those of you that don't know about this, is a kind of a model of organizing people. It's a method, if you like, to achieve uh, functionality in communities. Uh, enabling, for example, villagers to manage their uh, own health and development initiatives in a rather sustainable and integrated fashion. Uh, my own view is that this is not just for African villages. I believe this model is something that uh, the entire world can learn something from. It's about people working together and communicating and sharing knowledge and wealth. Um, and it's the future of humanity, I, I would think, even in the, the largest city blocks uh, in, uh, around the world. That kind of self-help mechanism is something new. Um, and I think we can all learn from Africa. Um, Rwanda is an interesting case. There'll be a lot of focus on that today. Um, uh, as, as you know, Rwanda went through a lot of changes, still going through many changes um, after the years of genocide and internal uh, strife. Uh, it's it's a, a star, if you like, amongst African countries in terms of reorganizing itself. And the, the model is, is working in the rural areas. Um, I w will actually be starting off with the paper that's uh, timed at uh, 10 after 10 on the revised um, uh, agenda here. I, uh, I will be giving uh, Fidel Negabo's uh, talk for him. He unfortunately had to stay home in Kigali. There's a reorganization occurring of his uh, ministry, and he had to um, stay back for very important meetings uh, all next week. So um, uh, it's actually uh, one of the, um, if you like, um, success stories. And the thing about successes are that most people say, oh, it's a success, that's, that's really good. And the um, uh, question is, do people understand why it's a success so you can learn from it? Usually we, we, we tend to say, oh, it's something failed and uh, we have to find out why. But if it's a success, there's often even more ignorance. Because people don't really actually sit down and try to understand what uh, the success was all about. So we'll try to explain that a little bit. I, I will give this talk, and I hope it'll be done in about 10 or 15 minutes, and then we'll go on to the, the schedule mm -hmm. with, with uh, Juliet Walter-Keen and Anthony Walter-Keen, and after that, Dan Wolf and Lisa Nash all that before the tea break. So, um, so Dr. Fidel Negabo, he's, um, he's the director of, of the Maternal uh, Health Club Unit in, um, in the Ministry of Health. And um, you can see here that um, I'm always fascinated by the logotypes. There. This is a, just an example of, of the in integration that you need in, in a way of thinking. And I, I think the there's, um, there's a lot to be said about uh, images, and you'll see in this, this presentation that, um, that, in fact, all the papers today, they'll be full of illustrations, and they will, they will get a feeling of, um, of that integration that, that we're trying to achieve here. It's not, it's not sector, but it's multi-sector. The um, Community-Based Environmental Health um, Promotion Program, it's, it's, um, it's a Rwanda uh, program. There's, there's a lot of documentation on it. It, um, it uses the CHC approach and it reaches out uh, to communities empowering them. Uh, there's um, this whole thing about identifying your personal, your domestic hygiene and nutritional needs, the environmental health requirements. It starts from drinking water, but it goes beyond that to toilets, to hand washing, to food safety, to cook stoves, to drainage, uh, you know, paths that are getting paved and things like that. Uh, th this particular program was launched in 2009, and it's uh, continuing on for um, eight uh, more years after um, beyond the 2009 to 2017. Um, the, this report uh, is, is, if you like, midstream uh, as we go halfway through. And you can see that there are some focus uh, pr problems, uh, diarrhea-based um, uh, problems, intestinal parasites, uh, respiratory functions like indoor uh, air and, and cooking stove problems. Uh, this whole aspect of how to lift um, uh, communities up and develop beyond um, uh, what they are today. 
if uh, if a community, for example, is is uh, affected uh, by a threat like Ebola, this kind of unit would be how it should should be organized to to prevent it from spreading. We did try to get some Ebola specialists for this. Um, uh, the Swedish ones are very very busy, uh, either in in uh, Sierra Leone, but. Um, uh, so we don't have, we're not going to turn this into an Ebola discussion, but it, it could easily be one. The, the CHC approach, it's, it's, a, um, it's a question of, of sitting and learning and talking. And it, it's this long list, if you like, of over a six month uh, period um, with uh, 24 dialogue sessions. That would be pretty well uh, one a week. And um, it's um, key words like target group, inclusive, structured, reinforcing. <laughs> participatory. Women-led is not there, but that's the case. Um, so consensus, very, such an important thing in, in the base of, of governance, uh, that people actually do homework, that they get certified, they get a, 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 a paper that says that they've, they've actually gone through this training. Um, there's monitoring of, of the changes. You get the feedback on, on a weekly basis, and it's fair. And it creates, if you like, equity and sharing. Uh, one of the things that um, it's been compared to is the so-called CLTS, community-led total sanitation. Usually these communities have like open defecation or dysfunctional water and sanitation, amongst other things that are dysfunctional. Uh, that's a name and shame approach that some people say has a big impact. Uh, the question is, does it have a long-term impact? Uh, the CHC model is showing that it does similar things, but it doesn't shame, it's not negative and it has a much more resilient kind of effect. It's much more constructive in the long term. Um, so this is a sort of model that integ integrates over environmental health. Um, the whole national program on, on uh, poverty alleviation and development. Uh, this whole thing about uh, uh, increasing the access to water and sanitation, and then enhancing uh, human as well as natural resources. So. It, it's, um, it's, it's things like waste management, but it's also access to resources. Uh, interesting way to integrate it. And of course, government fits in, and it's an interesting model here. We start, uh, if you like, at the Ministry of Health at the top, but that doesn't actually, that's not where it really starts. It's also starting at the bottom. You can see the village uh, head is, is, is um, well uh, uh, involved, and also the committee that the CHC is. So this is the thing, it has to be ground roots um, at, the, at the bottom and then the middle part is informed and then the top is brought in. So uh, with that you actually develop governance and, and sharing um, and consensus. This is a kind of a, a membership card that you can carry in your pocket, a green, green card. It's probably the best green card you can get. Um, so these are all the topics and then the practices. And for a communicator this is gold. You have a, a topic like um, hand washing, and then you have a three-word activity. There's nothing more powerful than actually trying to get things down to just a few words. So there's hours and hours of thinking and training behind each one of these. Um, to me, if all citizens of the world knew about these things and practiced them, we'd have a completely different place. And you wouldn't have the risk of shaking hands with people this morning. Uh, we don't have the alcohol dispensers here, but they're in basically every healthcare center uh, that has any money at all these days. Um, I believe a, a place like this uh, should actually have that as well. So we don't know where we've been the last few hours. So um, the, uh, the uh, promotion program has been implemented now in, um, in 18 of the 30 districts of, of Rwanda. Uh, two districts are about to be starting. Um, there's um, uh, an establishment, if you like, in those districts of basically 100% uh, functionality um, uh, if of the CHCs without training at 40%. I'm not sure what, that, what he means by that. Uh, that's a question to ask. The, um, there's fully functional CHCs, that's 27% of them. So I, there's, uh, there's probably a transition as, as time goes with the each CHC and its training curve. Um, supported with the, the dialogues and the, the tools and, and these weekly meetings. And there's also this thing about time, timely reporting. So that's um, uh, actually making sure that, that things are monitored as, as, as things progress. And here we see a picture of the minister actually during the, the, um, the hand washing campaign. 
Um, <clears throat> if you, this is a little too much to swallow all here. I'm not going to go through it, but if you just look at the, uh, the red um, columns, those are the, that's the baseline. So baseline is very important when you start the community health club, and then after uh, uh, three months' time, you can see the differences, and, and that this is a percent um, uh, improvements. So in 50 villages over the three months. And this was in one of this was in a western district in uh, Rwanda. Uh, the ones that really stick out are um, actually so, so, uh, something as simple as water being taken with one cup only. That's you know it's, um, uh, sharing the, the cup uh, as much as before. And the, another one that is um, is very significant is uh, not sharing a, a hand wash bowl. That's that's interesting. The other one is. Um, uh, washing hands with a tippy tap, um, and I, I can see another one uh, as we go way over to the other side. A ventilated kitchen, huge one is is uh, safe um, recycling of solid waste and also uh, paving the the paths. That's a very important thing about about transmission of, of disease. Uh, and then um, nets, of course, uh, to um, prevent um, mosquito-borne malaria, uh, malaria. So these things you could say are just fundamental, but to, to actually get them going in villages, you need this kind of, of, um, of model. And uh, so we can see some, some major changes just after just a few months. Um, spontaneous startup savings. Uh, this thing is a, is a very cost-effective uh, <coughs> way of, of deploying resources. And I would expect the government is very pleased with the performance. Um, there's, it's, it's linked with uh, sharing of wealth. It's, it's linked to income generating activities. Um, there's cooperation um, within the, 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 the clubs. If you get women led organizations, you tend to try to have constructive uh, models and, and, and um, discussions and I uh, tend not to sort of hack, it, hack it at each other and say, this is wrong, this is wrong. As my child has diarrhea because, you know, of your bad habits talking to a neighbor or something. Instead, we'll try to speak about something that maybe is a solution. Mutual assistance. Um, and, of course, if, if when you're sick, you're vulnerable and you want to talk about it, you want to get uh, healthy again. So the drivers are all there. So this is capacity building, um, and even the, the the health officers coming in, the environmental health officers are getting the kind of support feedback and monitoring that they need to. So they're, they're actually succeeding at their, their work as well. Um, so here's a summary, if you like, of the changes that, uh, that, that happen. Um, and it's water source, it's, it's, um, it's drinking water, it's sanitation, it's, uh, it's personal hygiene, it's hand washing, it's kitchen hygiene, solid waste, the safety around the environment, um, there's malaria control, and there's childcare. And there's, in between those lines, a whole lot, lot of other things that, that are... But these are the 10 golden indicators, if you like, that, that people are clearly knowledgeable about and aim for and improve. With the, if, if you're familiar with the, the F uh, diagrams, so all the vectors for, for disease, uh, this is not an urban um, problem. I think it's, 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 a, it's a global... Um, uh, problem. It's, it's not just not just a rural problem. It's 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 urban as well. It's peri-urban, and we have um, a lot of learning, if you like. That humans are in the north. We're very ignorant about a lot of these things. People just take this stuff for granted. Um, so finally, we've got I think the the achievements in these 50 CHCs in in the, this western uh, uh, district, and you can see the data here. And this is um, there's 6,000. Um, 721 uh, CHC households uh, and organized into the 50 CHCs. So they've got uh, new latrines, Im improved the existing ones, they, um, they're being properly covered and maintained, there's bath shelters, there's ha hand washing facilities, there's compost pits, uh, fuel efficient stoves, uh, the yards, uh, yards are being swept. Sweeping is, is such an important part of respecting your um, a yard and, and also preventing disease. More households um, uh, getting water safely handled and um, the drinking water is now being, being treated properly. So it's a high level of response uh, by any standards at all. If you, any of you have worked in these kinds of conditions, 
uh, you'll understand that to see these kinds of numbers, um, it, it's really quite a success story. And it's the reason why t uh, Rwanda is one of the only African countries that's met the MDG on, on water and sanitation. Um, and it, this looks like it's something that, that uh, is resilient. It's, it's actually going to stay around. So, um, Fidel, uh, uh, thanks for um, uh, uh, this presentation. It, it is being filmed, and hopefully you can watch it. And, and on the dialogues, we'll be putting these things up on the SCI website and also on the Sustainable Sanitation website. I think there'll be some discussions about it. Um, and if there's any questions, I think we have uh, just a couple of minutes before we go to, uh, to Juliet's paper. And if, if you do want to say something, you have to be on mic. So I'm not sure if you, I think they have to come up here. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, I don't have that answer, but I, I would believe that uh, either Juliet or Anthony might, um, since they have been working with, with Fidel. Um, uh, longer term monit monitoring, is that uh, something you have some, some data on? You've published that? Uh, I think you can speak to it. Hi. Um, so the question was, um, is there any long-term monitoring going on? First of all, the randomized control trial that is taking place in Rusisi district um, is being funded by the Gates and being conducted by IPA, International Poverty uh, Alleviation. Poverty Alleviation, yeah. Um, that is going on now. Um, the baseline's been done, and basically they're going to publish probably the end of next year, and the year after probably be out in the, in the public domain. Um, we've had a couple of published papers um, on, uh, you can find on our website, this Africa Ed um, website. Um, there's been quite a lot of published work um, in terms of our own research, but the Gates Foundation work that's going on now is the first <coughs> external evaluation that's being conducted. But we have um, a, a long track record of monitoring, which we've done, um, which you can find on the website, and that's the Africa Head website. Any other question? One more at the back. I don't have that data with me. Um, uh, if, if there is a someone who has that data on the cost a cost of CHCs compared to CLTS. That, that comparison is, is a good one. I, I know that UNICEF is collecting data on their, their CLTS thing. I'm not sure if George will be addressing that at the end uh, of the day. He's not, no. I could just come in on the, on the, um, the community health club side. In, in, um, we, we work on an under $5 per head for that integrated program. In, in Zimbabwe last year, um, there were about 1,000 health clubs, just under 1,000 health clubs that were funded by USAID and the European <coughs> through ACF. And it came out at $4.42 per head. Just that was the gross project cost, that we, the, the funding we received divided by the number of beneficiaries. It was 172,000 people in that one year period. And it came out at 442 for that integrated package that you saw there. That's the, the training. And that is, I, I guess there's some assumptions there that the government uh, health officers is, is already paid. They're already paid, yeah. yeah. And that if there is sector uh, subsidies for things like cook stoves or latrines or things like that, that would be done separately That's as well. Separate. But the main thing is you have a vehicle for creating consensus. And that is worth gold in itself. It pays for itself. And of course, knowledge about hygiene, that's, that's gold as well. So, 